Well, we all know tomatoes is probably the most popular thing grown in the backyard vegetable garden, and for good reason. Heck, we all love a good tomato sandwich. But you know, our quest is to grow our own food, and I think winter squash do not get their due diligence. I wish more people would try growing winter squash in their backyard vegetable garden. Now, when I was coming up on into my adulthood years, I knew what a butternut was, I knew what an acorn squash was, and then later on I knew what a spaghetti squash was, but that was limited to what I knew about winter squash. And I had this crazy preconception that, you know what, that was for rich people to eat, or maybe that was for northerners, and maybe that was true in the southern United States. We just did not partake of it a lot. But as I grew older, started to understand and started to try things, I realized that there's several different types, profiles, sweetness, a lot of different varieties of winter squash or hard squash, something for everyone. My first encounters with winter squash was I grew some spaghetti squash. I must have been in my 20s because I just thought they was cool. So I grew some spaghetti squash one year and we cooked them didn't like them. I don't know if I didn't season them right, I didn't know how to cook them, but just wasn't my thing. So I laid off of them for a few years. About 10 years ago, got interested in them again because they just are, they're very pretty. I just love the idea of having something like my potatoes that I put in the barn that I can go up there and get when I want to eat it, a food that stores, a vegetable that stores well without electricity. I love having that satisfaction to have it up there when I want it. So looking at the different varieties, looking at the different shapes and sizes of them, got me interested in growing winter squash again. And you know what, if you go to the grocery store and you buy those canned pumpkins, more than likely that is a winter squash. So winter squash are used for a lot of different things. Pumpkin pies, all kinds of soups. Probably our favorite method is to eat them roasted some way in the oven. We like to put bacon on them, sea salt and roast them, but heck, there's several ways you can enjoy them. I don't know how many varieties of winter squash they are out there, but there's a lot of them. I'm gonna show you what I'm growing this year, and I'm like everybody else. I get dialed in on a few favorites, and that's what I continue to grow. The one I'm growing this year is delicata, and this is a spring crop because I do better growing my winter squash in the spring. I don't do as well in the fall for fall crop because I have intense bug pressure squash bugs, we have a lot of downy mildew, powdery mildew. I, I try it every now and then and I'll get a decent harvest, but to get those bumper harvests, we have to grow them in the spring. All right, so this is one of my all time favorites. This is Delicata. I would have to say Delicata is probably my favorite and it is of the Pepo species. Now what you will notice with these winter squash is they're different ones categorized in different species. Pepo is the same one that your summer squash is in, your zucchinis, your yellow squash. Well, this delicata is a pepo species also. Normally speaking, these winter squash that are in the pepo are sweeter and they don't store as long. We get about 30 days storage out of these delicatas at most. So we need to eat them fairly quick after we grow them. One good thing about them is you don't have to cure them like you do some of the rest of them. So that is a good one. I love the sweet flavor of them. And this delicata has good size. So one of them split in half is more than enough for me and Mama Hoss. Now I grow another one a lot of times called sweet dumplings. It's a smaller squash. Uh, probably takes about two, of the, two or three of those for two people. It's sweet as well. But the delicata is great size for me and that's what I decided to grow this spring. Now the other one that I'm growing is red curry, and that's K-U-R-I. It's probably been about seven, eight years since I've grown this one right here. It's a Hubbard type squash. It's in the Maxima species. So I can plant this red curry next to my delicata. I don't have to worry about them cross pollinating because they're in a different species there. Now this one right here is not gonna be quite as sweet as the delicata there. It's gonna make a bigger squash and has that bright red flesh to it. It stores better than that one. I'm probably gonna get up to six months storage out of these red curries here. 
So we're going to have some winter squash that's going to last a little bit longer. And we'll eat those delicatas first, and we'll have these red curries that's going to last us on into for a few months. Now, some of the, the growth habit of these plants are a little bit different. This red curry of the Maximoth species does more vining, so you need more room to grow these right here. They'll vine out. I planted these on 36 inch rows and they just about lap over and cover. You can see there and they're vining out and getting over there into my other plants. So, you know, 36, you could even spread your, your spacing out a little bit more than that because they need plenty of room to grow. These pepo type, on the other hand, is just opposite. They don't vine out and they grow in more compact areas. So if you're dealing with raised beds or limited garden space, I would say go with these pepos because you're gonna need more room for those Hubbard type squash than you are these. It's pretty amazing how much these others trail out and run and vine compared to these pepo types. So there's very little difference on how you grow these winter squash compared to summer squash. Now it takes anywhere from 95 to 110 days for these to mature out. So you got a longer lifespan there so you got to take a little bit better care of your plants there. Now I like to use drip irrigation because we like to keep the moisture off those leaves because downy and powdery mildew, specifically downy is probably my biggest pest that I battle with these winter squash. And of course, we got the vine borers and the squash bugs that everybody has a little bit of a problem with. So the way we control those is by planting in the springtime when the populations are down, we like to use good cover crops ahead of them so that we can break that cycle down. We keep our garden nice and clean so we don't give those bugs uh, a habitat to grow in. And by using some pesticides, some organic pesticides specifically, we can keep our populations down to a controllable level. We got a days to maturity of about 95 days to 110 days. So when do you harvest? You can see these squash here are getting pretty good size now, but unlike summer squash, we want to wait till these squash mature. And normally speaking, we'll start seeing our vine go down, yellow up, and get a little ratty looking before these squash are ready to harvest. But a telltale sign when to harvest these winter squash is when that rind gets kind of tough. The old rule is called the thumbnail rule. You take your thumbnail and push it into that outer rind there. If you do not scratch it or indent it, then it's probably ready for harvest there. You can tell that they're gonna be maturing out. The stem's gonna get uh, a little tougher to uh, the harvest there. It's not gonna be quite as pliable. It's gonna be more firm. At that point, you wanna look at it and see if it's good hard skin. If that's the case, more likely they're ready to harvest. And one of the main things you need to understand is some of them do need to cure before you use them and some of them don't. These pepos do not. So you can harvest these and enjoy them the same day. Some of these other varieties such as butternut and acorns, you have to let them cure for a little bit and you can look on our growing guide and find out exactly what the uh, circumstances you need to put them under for them to cure out. Some of it can be anywhere from three to four weeks. Those sugars or those carbohydrates need to convert into sugars. They need to cure out, then you can enjoy them. You don't want to you know, harvest those type and try to cook them the same day. Looking back at it with that spaghetti squash that I grew, that may have been part of my problem. I didn't know anything about curing them. So uh, you definitely want to keep that in mind as to what type you grow and when you can get ready to harvest it and when you plan on eating. Well, whether you've tried them before and you didn't like them or you just never thought they was for you, I would only encourage you to try growing you some type of winter squash. Do a little research on the different types of them. See which one you think would suit you best and give them a try. I'll guarantee you, you'll probably love them. You know, it's weird how our thoughts and our taste buds <laughs> change over a period of years. It's one of those things that we really look forward to now we enjoy them. It's great to have that food source in our barn whenever we want them. So I'd encourage you, give them a try.